Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux top five. And so today what we're going to talk about is I'm going to share with you guys the top five reasons I choose Linux Mint Cinnamon as my main production computers. Now as you follow my channel you know that I do bounce this computer around a lot. This one right now, I'm. this is the default install on this computer. It's uh, Linux Mint uh, KDE. Um, and uh, I like it. I mean, pretty much any KDE I could set up like this. Um, of all of the KDEs I've tried, uh, this has been the best one, although it does have a few of its limitations. Um, but when I am talking about my production, that means when I'm getting my work done as a web developer, um, I use Linux Mint Cinnamon. Uh, so any of my general purpose computers are probably Linux Mint Cinnamon or something similar. Uh, for example, my netbook runs Peppermint, which has a lot of the same elements. Um, but today I'm going to show you why I use Linux Mint Cinnamon. Um, these are my ideas. Now the great news about running GNU Linux uh, desktop, computer desktop, is that there is something out there that is for absolutely everybody. You want the latest modern cutting edge stuff, you got it. I don't care for the la modern latest cutting edge stuff. You know, things like integrating your account logins and integrating your media players in the notification center, that's the kind of stuff that's kind of cool. It just doesn't have any practical application for the things that I do on a day in day out basis. Um, but Linux Mint Cinnamon is exactly what I need and I'm going to show you why today. So here I am on my desktop and um, I just have a, a nice clean desktop set up. The reason I like this is first, number one, it has a familiar layout that I am very productive in. So it does have a feel just like a Windows environment feel, circa Windows Vista, Windows 7, maybe Windows XP to a degree. I have on the lower uh, left, I have a menu which has all of the information that I need. Right next to that, I have a series of quick launch buttons. These are not the modern concept of pinning to the taskbar where each time I click it, I can only really open and toggle that one item, but every time I click this button, I will open a new instance of this application, which is exactly what I need to do. Um, I have a uh, system or a taskbar here, which will show me all of the various windows that I have open. And then I have my uh, task manager type, um, eh, what do you call it, system tray, I guess you'd call this in the Windows type environment. I have a clock, which is configurable, and I have status icons. You can see I need to run some updates probably. Um, OBS is recording. Here's my volume. Here's my network connections. Uh, this guy here will allow me to toggle all windows. And then what I always do is right in the very bottom uh, right of the screen is I have my show desktop button. So just like on a Windows system, I click that, it minimizes all windows, and now I can rebuild the desktop. I do this, and this is important because I'm usually working directly off of my desktop. I am much faster at that than digging through document folders and things like that. So that's kind of how I, I want to work, and this layout has the exact productivity setup that I want to have. So I don't need something fancy and modern if what I have is working for me. So that's the first reason I choose Linux Mint Cinnamon. Now secondly, uh, and adjacent to this, is not only do I have this layout that I like, but it is a very customizable layout. If I come down here and I go into panel edit mode, I can adjust the panel settings, uh, right clicking that, and then the things that I can do is I can always show the panel, which is my preferred. I hate it when the panel disappears, but for those people that like to hide panels, you can set it up to auto hide the panels. And so when it's not being used, it will disappear. And then of course you have the intelligently hide panels as well. So I'm gonna keep that on always show the panel because that is my, my preference. And the other things that you can do is you can use a customized panel size. So I can turn this off, in which case it's just going to use whatever the default is, or I can actually turn this on and I can make the panel really big or I can make it really small if I want to. Um, so if you do want a bigger or a smaller panel, you have the options to really make this thing your own, which is which is really uh, really nice option. And I have, you'll see here is the default. There's a default button there. 
I'm going to turn that back off because I like how it how it happens to be. And of course, I can also add things uh, to the panel if I come down here and right click. I can add applets to the panel and I have a whole list of things that I can add. Uh, calendar items, uh, display icons, there's uh, there's a more customized menu. If you want a menu like this but you want it more customized, you can do that. A lot of different things that you can actually add to the panel. And then there's some available ones online as well. So we're going to close out of that. I'm going to right click, turn off the panel edit mode. So that is my number two, is I can customize the layout of the panel and the icons too. I'm, um, I guess we'll do that real quickly. Uh, just over here into your settings, into your themes, and you can adjust your uh, icons over here. Pull this up. You can see we have a variety of icons available for us. All right. So the third is drivers. Uh, there's, there's a series of tools and things that make this easy to use. One of the challenges many people have using a Linux desktop environment is that uh, sometimes you will have a problem with proprietary, uh, proprietary hardware. Uh, as a case in point, um, I actually just had to do some parts replacements on uh, my main computer here. And one of the things that, that uh, was kind of failing was the wireless card, uh, which is right down here now. And so the wireless card, the problem is the, uh, the white adapter part there, I don't know if you can focus on that or not, uh, broke off. And so um, I had another old card laying around. I didn't know much about it or what its brand was or anything else, but I went ahead and dropped it in there, booted the computer up. Hmm, no love, didn't have wireless. But then what you do is I went into the settings and then you come down here to the driver manager and then this will actually scan your computer hardware and see if there are any available proprietary drivers that you could install on the system. Now, by default, it's not going to install all these. So you'll see here, this there is an Intel microcode. I don't know, I might actually get better uh, performance for this computer if I turn this on, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's a proprietary software and so it by default doesn't use it. Well, it turns out that that little wireless card that I had laying around, I pulled it out of some dead computer somewhere, was one of those Broadcom chips that don't like to work too well. But what I did is I uh, need a little bit of an internet access. So I just have in my little pile of USB type stuff, I got myself just a nice little um, uh, wireless thumb tab. So I dropped that guy in there to give it temporary internet access. Went right into this driver menu and wouldn't you know it, right in here shows up Broadcom driver. Would you like to use the Broadcom driver? Go ahead and click the button, hit apply changes, it downloaded the files, installed the driver software, I rebooted the computer, now I have wireless internet. Works just as fine as the old card did, so I was able to actually fix my computer's wireless problems without having to buy any extra parts, just scraping an old part I had laying around. But this driver manager took out all of the hassle. If I were on a lot of other Linux distros, I'd be in the terminal. I'd be doing a lot of things, doing uh, driver installs. Um, so, But this system here, the driver manager, perfect. It worked. By default, it didn't want to use the proprietary stuff. But when it, uh, when it becomes necessary, you have it as an option. Uh, and you can easily see what it is. And so that is my number three reason is my driver managers. The fourth reason here, I don't have something to show you on the computer itself, but for a lot of systems, now there's no one perfect uh, GNU Linux system that works perfectly on everything that's out there. There's just too much hardware out there in the world. And some people have problems uh, with Linux Mint running on, on their systems, and so what they want to do is probably look around for something else. Uh, but for the vast majority of hardware that seems to be out there, Linux Mint does a really good job of supporting uh, most of that. You might find things where you need to install drivers for, for graphics cards. Um, NVIDIA cards might have a challenge. I'm not sure. I think everything I have is AMD. Um, but uh, you, have, uh, you have the majority of systems out there Linux Mint will work on. And of all of the computers I have in my office, Linux Mint Cinnamon works perfectly fine on all of them. Um, now there are obviously there are a lot of systems that may not, but for me, for the most of the hardware I use, Linux Mint Cinnamon does all of the job I need it to do without 
any problems whatsoever. And the fifth reason I use Linux Mint Cinnamon is the available software is, uh, there is a lot of it and the software center is, is really nice. This is particularly useful uh, because with the new um, Ubuntu, they've gotten rid of the old Ubuntu Software Center, which I really liked. I thought it was very user-friendly, and they replaced it with the GNOME Software Center, which I think is is a very bad choice. Um, it's it's just it's it's a lot harder to search in that not that you can't search it, but it's that the search function only seems to take the package names, not what you're looking for. But if I want to do something like word processor. Um, in the Linux Mint system, I can search for that and I'll find a lot of things like Abbey Word will not show up if you search for word processor. Um, last time I checked, I'm not completely sure they might have fixed that. But I've had a lot of software where I know the software exists, I know it's in the repository, it won't show up doing a basic search for what it is. Now if I search directly for the name, I always get it. Um, but here we have a very good search function, but we also have a very good user interface. So if I want to browse for something, I don't know what's out there. I can browse for stuff or I can do a search function. So I kind of get the best of both worlds and there is an abundant amount of software. Now there is a downside to this upside and that is that some of the software in the Linux Mint system can be a little out of date. So double check what software you happen to be using and double check if there is a newer software, particularly if what you're doing doesn't work. The greatest example of that is Kden Live. For whatever reason, the Kden Live packaged with Linux Mint 18 is still the old version, which actually crashes a lot and doesn't really work. So what I do, because I use Kden Live for my uh, for my video editing, is I have just installed the PPAs uh, to always be using the most recent stable ones, despite what's in the package manager. And if you want to know how to do that, um, actually, I just go to Kden Live, and it'll tell you exactly what. Um, uh, what PPAs to add, but you have the option to add them in the terminal or you can come over here and you can add them right in the GUI here. So if you are terminally afraid of the terminal, you can do everything you want from the GUI. Um, but if, I mean, this, I wouldn't do this adding a PPA personally because the terminal is so much faster. Uh, but for those people just love wanting to switch over to Linux, realize that Linux is no longer the place where you got to go into terminals. Linux Mint Cinnamon has done a lot. And this is not the only distro that has a lot of these great advantages. This is, these are the reasons I personally use this one. Um, of course, if you follow my videos, you know, I was running, um, um, Manjaro Budgie for a while, and that's a very modern system, and that was really cool. I like some of those modern integrations, but as far as my production work computers, I don't need a lot of the integrations and the razzy dazzy stuff. I need something that's productive and gets out of my way, and Linux Mint Cinnamon is that perfectly for me. So, thank you for watching this video on my top five reasons I use Linux Mint Cinnamon. If you like this video and you would like to help support what we are doing, you can check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support, or you can check in the links down below. I'll have a link down there to my Patreon page. Um, I will also have some links to uh, PayPal, and I have uh, some links to Amazon. So, if you do want to buy something on Amazon, you can click on the link down the bottom. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but a small portion of that sale will come to help support what we do here on Switch to Linux. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.